Hi and welcome to Learn Cocos TV episode number five, Pretty State Machine. Today I have a big announcement to make, um, something that I've been working on and basically wanting to have for years now is um, scripting for Cocos 2D and obviously that also includes Cobalt 2D. So for the past few weeks I've been working um, on Cobalt script. Um, which is uh, Lua scripting interface for Cocos 2D and obviously Co Cobalt 2D as well. And that also might explain why I've been asking um, all those uh, stupid poll questions, for example, which scripting language you would prefer for Cocos 2D, which I can... let me check. Let's see, it's um, current results are Lua upfront, which I kind of expected it. Um, Forty percent, twenty-eight percent of users use uh, like you would like to use JavaScript for Cocos 2D scripting, and surprisingly, there's um, well, surprising for me at least, um, Python and Ruby come pretty high up there as well, with uh, sixteen percent each. Um, so why why would anyone use Lua instead of JavaScript or even Python or Ruby, and um, why is it so popular among game developers? And I think uh, it's very easy to answer because um, Lua has a history of being the dominant uh, scripting language for um, game developers, you could say. Um, JavaScript doesn't even come close and it's only being out there now because of the, all the web games. And the reason for that is that uh, Lua is probably the fastest or among the top fastest uh, scripting languages that you can have. At the same time it's uh, very slim, doesn't use much memory, um, doesn't increase the app size uh, much and it's very easy to embed and there have been various uh, bridges and um, yeah, what is a bridge? Um, basically, uh, that's the that's the code or the tool that helps you interface um, Lua scripts with uh, a C, C++, or even an Objective-C program. So what I've been doing is um, experimenting with uh, Swig. Um, Swig is the simplified wrapper and interface generator. Um, that's a tool that uh, supports Lua, but it doesn't just support Lua, so um, it's a very useful tool to have in your programmer's toolbox because, um, I don't know, maybe someday you'd like to interface with a different scripting language like, um, well, Perl, Python, Ruby, um, or even C Sharp. And it's also um, very handy, it's uh, quite well documented and um, uh, can be a bit overwhelming at first if you look at the documentation being this large but um, most of this is uh, because uh, each language has a big subsection. So what does that mean? I have a, a Cobalt script project here in Cobalt 2D right now um, that I use uh, to develop this stuff and um, I have my uh, Swig wrapper function, um, which is basically just a set of include statements, and um, I define some type maps so that uh, I can convert, for example, a Lua string into an NS string, and um, most of the other glue code is just uh, simple C wrappers. Um, essentially, you have a C function, which is pretty tiny, like create state machine, and that calls, in this case, calls a singleton method, create state machine with name. And it goes on. Now, um, it returns a script state machine, and that script state machine is again used in a state machine create state, and so on. So um, basically, you are reusing the objects that you return to Lua to um, call other functions on that same object. And the system works pretty well and requires very minimal amount of glue code. You can see most of these um, conditions, uh, um, most of these methods are just one-liners. Um, so it's pretty easy and fast to write uh, um, to expose uh, functions to Lua. So let's look at the Lua state machine. This is what the final state machine will look like. Um, what you'll be using for scripting. Maybe a bit verbose if, if you are into the uh, Koenigam and Ritchie style you can condense it a bit more but 
personally I prefer to have my code more readable than dense. Um, so the state machine here um, consists of multiple states of course um, and in case uh, you're wondering what what the hell is a state machine um i can refer you to the finite state machine article on wikipedia they have some good examples there um maybe you haven't heard of the word but um i'm sure you've done state machine programming before it's in essence not not uh, much different from if this happens then do this uh, else if do something else um it's just a more formal way to express um if else if conditions basically um, a state machine um, always has just one active state um, consider a state uh, being the equivalent of a, a cocos 2d scene so you can have uh, events in each state in this case here it's a one-time event which means it's executed only once and then never again you can have non-stop events which are um, evaluating the conditions um, every frame and every time the condition returns true or the number of conditions all return true um, it executes its actions and you can also have a periodic event which runs every 100 frames checks its conditions if they are true um, runs an action this is um, very important for let's say you have win conditions um, and you don't need to check this every frame it's sufficient to check it every second or something like that um, so it's uh, basically um, a method to um, reduce the load on the CPU um, the cool thing about the state machine here is that you don't have to um, write new conditions new actions um, every time y you extend it because um, there's a Lua function returns and a Lua function execute um, condition and action which uh, take a Lua function and a table as input and essentially they just call that function whenever they want to get the results or um, when the action uh, is supposed to perform an action um, and with a table you can exchange uh, data between the conditions the actions and um, basically drive your game logic um, this is a good compromise between um, objective c performance because the state machine is uh, converted to objective c uh, code and um, Lua code which runs whenever you call the function um, so uh, that's basically what the state machine does at the moment um, there's not much to see let's check um, I have some proof here that it actually works <laughs> in the log um, I'll add something about sprites and, and, and labels and whatever um, I'll try to implement a very simple game with it um, so maybe I have something more to show um, in two weeks or hopefully in four at the latest um, so this is the, the dump of the state machine that you saw before um, in its raw form basically so um, it was loaded and as you can see there's stuff going on there's something like action called every couple seconds and that's uh, essentially this Lua function which just prints a statement and dumps the table the parameters table which you may recognize this one here it's the same as uh, this one so all in all um, very cool system um, and uh, I've pretty much uh, lo lots of experience with it because um, I basically um, wrote this system three times for um, Battleforge and Spellforce uh, games my previous job and um, as you can see the script system there looks uh, very much familiar and well um, let's see uh, I also um, wrote a, uh, a idfblog or tape post um, because I needed to find a Lua text editor one that's good and um, my biggest concern was autocomplete and turns out that um, from all the content contenders only BB Edit and Sublime Text 2 um, were sufficiently capable of supporting Lua um, for my needs at least um, out of the box um, so if you're looking for a good uh, Lua text editor um, check out these two they both are commercial cost 50 to 60 dollars 
Um, there are some free editors, but of course they don't have autocomplete. Um, so um, it's probably up to you um, to see if, if that's worth money. My personal um, preference right now is Sublime Text 2, um, just because it's, uh, well, it just feels programmerish and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, there's one question that came up uh, a few times. Um, uh, Lua, JIT compilers. Um, you can't have a JIT compiler, just in time compiler JIT, um, on iOS devices. And there's a technical reason for that. Um, a compiler basically um, translates uh, code into um, executable statements. Now, the executable statements on a device. Um, have to be in a certain memory area that is flagged as executable. Unfortunately, um, that memory area is write protected, so um, while you can compile the code, you won't be able to run it because it's not in memory areas that uh, can execute code. And you can't move it over the to the executable code because it's write protected. So no JIT compilers for iOS devices, um, which uh, it's an interesting question because um, poses an interesting question because um, all the JavaScript uh, performance benchmarks are based on uh, JIT um, JavaScript engines, and uh, so time will tell um, how well the uh, non-JIT uh, JavaScript engines will do on the iOS. Um, certainly, they won't be able to uh, beat the speed of a state machine unless they also implement uh, a state machine. So, um, let's see, uh, can't tell when it's coming out yet, um, still very much in development, but I'd like to um, start a closed alpha test or something like that uh, sometime soon, and definitely want to do some simple games, some g simple games with it uh, as a proof of concept. Okay, so that's it for today. I don't have anything else to say as far as I can remember. I probably have lots of stuff to talk about, but uh, as usual, I forget 90% of that um, during the show. Uh, so, well, we'll see if I remember it uh, in two weeks. See you then. Bye.